Hey everybody, Up and Adams on a Wednesday, big show, guy with two big Super Bowl rings, he's got two of these, baby! Chris Hogan is on the show. What exactly is going on in Foxytown? He knows Gerard Mayo, he knows the ins and outs, can't wait to talk to him. We have Trevor Sikama on the show. Sikama, uh, he puts the sick pup in Sikama because he is a PFF mock draft savant, a true mock draft virtuoso on the program. We're gonna talk to him and another Michigan man joining the show, national champ uh, from Mac Maui to, we don't know, where's he gonna go in the NFL? Texans, Bills, Jets, question mark, wide receiver, Roman Wilson is here, and Josh Allen is winning the offseason, not that Josh Allen. Got business to take care of on a Wednesday morning. Who says there's an offseason? Sure, are we, like, are we having meetings about the Derby and all this fun stuff that we're doing, what we're doing with the NBA? So much fun over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Great. But we got a big show. We got a big things to talk about here. Little news for you as you sip your coffee here. How about this? Anybody want to go to Sao Paulo? I do. Hey, Eric, want to go? Yes, Packers, Eagles, let's go! This is the week one matchup. You think I'm not going to this game? You're wrong, I'm going Brasilia. I can't wait. Uh, this draft, I love this. I love these little like nuggets. They, all just all the things that can trickle out about schedule release, this like a made up holiday that the amazing marketing machine, um, Tim Ellis and company over at the NFL decided to just make this a holiday, part of the 365 NFL experience. And we're getting these little morsels dropping out of the sky. I love this, the Eagles guys. Eagles in their first ever regular season game in Brazil. Um, it's also the first time the league has had an opening weekend game on a Friday night in 50 years, which is insane. Two, uh, one team that's got like, let, let's get it over with, Eagles. Like, let's let's start your season as soon as we possibly can on a Friday, which is amazing because I'm sure they want to put 2023 in the rear view, even though they made the playoffs, that's fine. But like, things fell off the track, off the rails here. Now they got Saquon Barkley. Saquon going to Brazil, we love that. Um, I don't know why we're, I, I don't have, can, can we go back up please? I would love to, uh, thank you so much. And then you have Green Bay, uh, Eric, producer Eric's on the show today. That's his squad. You know, we're seeing Jordan Love coming off that kind of season. What does it look like? They finished so strong. They just had their first international game uh, not too long ago and here they are doing it big uh, in Brazil. I'd like to hear from Packers fans. Do we like this? Usually we don't, is it a home game, Eric, for them? Or they, is, what is it counting for them? It's a home game. There's a lot of Packers fans. Are you mad? No, I'm so jacked. But most, I'm going. But fans yeah. are mad. No, we're excited. Really? Because I feel like fans didn't like them. For, they're like, don't take a home game away from us, kind of thing. No. There's nothing to do in Green Bay. Brazil is is the, the best. Do they have a piggly game. wiggly in Brazil? Do not. Okay. Got roasted pig. Do they have a strip club called the Oval Office in Brazil because they have one in Green Bay. Um, oh wow, the Packers season. Um, you know, they they are a, such a strong moment. They don't have Aaron Jones. What does that look like? Saquon, no Aaron Jones. Josh Jacobs, does he make up for the difference there? I don't know. Uh, they of course came up short in the Niners uh, uh, matchup uh, in the divisional. You know, Philly struggled down the stretch. What's the field going to look like? What's that? Wh wh how big of a story is that going to be? We'll see which team uh, shows up and makes it count. First game of the season guys in Brazil week one on a Friday we've only seen these two quarterbacks the the love hurts oh my god it's love hurts I'm going love hurts uh they've only been on the field together once and I believe it was back in 2022 when Jordan Love had to come in um the game for an injured Aaron Rodgers and fell just short of a comeback win and I'm sure Aaron Rodgers is like damn I'm with the Jets now. We don't get to go to Brazil. Brazil, a quick hop and a skip away from Costa Rica. He could have probably gotten an ayahuasca in the day before the game, and he doesn't get to do that now. Like, that's what happens when you go to the Jets and don't stay with your Green Bay Packers. Uh, okay, we also have other news. Why do I know the name of strip clubs in, uh, in Green Bay? Uh, what kind of a, a host of a football show doesn't know the best locales in the great NFL cities? across our great country, okay? Um, at Up and Adam Show, with your tweets, with your questions, guys, we have a big show. We've got Roman Wilson on, we've got Chris Hogan. Do I know the strip clubs in Foxborough? I do. Um, down in the AFC, big news. Monster news, monster deal. I couldn't be happier, okay? The Jags lock it up. They did the right thing at the perfect time. 26-year-old, two-time Pro Bowl linebacker Josh Allen. Have we seen the best of him? Probably not. He's getting five years, 150 million on the deal. That includes 88 million in guarantee. Now, in case you need a reminder, he's not just the other Josh Allen, some cute like little trite thing that people like to say sometimes. Only TJ Watt had more sacks last year, okay? He had 17 and a half. This, this is an anchor, and I'm glad, I'm so glad 
that the Jags decide to get this done. It's always nice to go into the OTA and schedule release portion of our program without the cloud, the looming, the what's going on with Josh Allen. They, of course, they hit him with the tag. They get a deal done, and I love that they do it with their boy. You know, like this is their, they drafted him, 2019, seventh round or seventh overall pick. Uh, that is a rarity for this franchise. Even like, you know, they draft Jalen Ramsey, crushes it. He doesn't get paid by them. He goes and gets paid by the Rams, wins the Super Bowl, that whole thing. It doesn't really usually work out that, that way. Trevor's going to get paid. So it's, it's nice to see, and you can balk all you want at this stuff, but they nailed it. They nailed it with this pick. The last first rounder, um, Jordan, who runs our social media, uh, who's amazing and also a huge Jags fan, I like asked him to come in the studio and chop it up with me. Like, how exciting is this? And it's just not something that they do. Like, the last first rounder to get an extension there, I think, is Blake Bortles, who they drafted in 2014. Remember that? It doesn't happen. They don't really get to this point with their players. And this is new, and I like it for them. I also like it because you look what the Texans have done on offense. This was a necessity to have this sort of an anchor. Um, and in general, I like the Jags everything that's happening here. Calvin Ridley, I think that was pretty uh, surprising to people when that didn't come back to fruition. But Gabe Davis is a dog. Make no mistake, he sees himself and he wants to be a wide receiver one. Uh, every person I talk to in the Bay Area talks about what a... We have everybody coming back except Eric Armstead. Eric Armstead's that dude. He's a, He'll be missed. He'll be missed in the Bay Area. He's a huge ad for this Jags team, Savage, DuBernay. The only person more excited than me this morning is Trevor Lawrence, who I asked about this from Seth Meyer Studio in New York City. I'm talking to him pre-Super Bowl, nothing. I asked him about Josh Allen and if he's coming back. He's an incredible player. We need him. He's been the, he's an anchor for our defense, and I'm excited. Excited for this next year for him. I know he's going to keep getting better, so I, I, I'm, I'm hoping he's back. I think he will be. Yeah, it wasn't a story for him. Of course we're going to get the deal done. He's that important. So, so far this offseason, this gentleman is the winning Josh Allen. Let's be clear. Okay, we've got lots to get to here. Uh, Roman Wilson, wide receiver out of Michigan. Where does he go? Well, I know who to ask these questions to because joining us right now, the lead analyst for Pro Football Focus, co-host of the NFL Stock Exchange, Trevor Sikama. Um, how are you? Good morning, Kay. So good to be with you. I'm shot out of a cannon for some reason. I've had like just this much of my coffee, so you're so lucky to be joining me because I don't know what I'm going to look like by the time Roman Wilson uh, gets on the actual program. But I'm excited to talk to him, to get to know him. I, you know, I know about these guys, but I know so much more about them when I get to get through a, a conversation with them. But I'm curious your thoughts on him as far as maybe a trait that separates him from other wide receivers. Uh, Roman's awesome. And there's, I feel like a lot of different traits, right? I mean, he, first you have to talk about his speed. I mean, his speed is phenomenal. I mean, his mom ran track, he ran track. I mean, he's got the four, three speed in him. So, you know, wow. he's got that vertical ability that teams are absolutely going to love, but beyond that, okay. He's a little bit smaller in size, but mm. this dude will block his butt off for you. And that's how he gets on the field. That's how you get on the field at Michigan. I've heard the motto from them. No <laughs> block, no rock. If you're not blocking, you're not going to get thrown the football. And Roman Wilson got thrown the football a lot over the last two years. Why? Because he takes so much pride in blocking. He's good pound for pound. He's so strong. Deep down the field, you know you're going to have those contested catches. And just because he's, again, a smaller receiver doesn't mean he's afraid to go up and get it over some of these corners, even some of these stronger corners. So Roman's entire game is a lot of fun. And I see him as a top 50 type of a player where I think he could be going in the early second round. Absolutely. All right. Maybe we'll play this back for him and just get his confidence up. I love, I love a small scrappy player and that speed is no joke. Can't wait to ask him uh, about that. And something about these Michigan men this year. I mean, I had, I had Dante Whitner coming here telling me that the chargers are going to waltz right into the AFC championship because Jim Harbaugh is that dude. And these are players that, you know, came from him and learned from the school of him. Um, you are, you are a rare breed. There's a there's a tall tale going around the, you know the hallowed halls here at FanDuel about how many mock drafts you create participate in in any given draft season. Can you can you tell me that number? Uh, hundreds. I mean, we we might be pushing like over 500 of mock drafts. It feels like because I mean, when you talk about the mock drafts that I write for PFF, that I do on my podcast, that I'll do on other players' podcasts, and just and then that's not even counting basically all the ones that I do for fun. Anyways, like we have series for where fun. we go through. <laughs> five round mock drafts for every team, seven round mock drafts for every team. And then as if that's not enough, sometimes at night, I'll just be like, Ooh, 
yeah, but what if the Jags did this? Or like, what if the Eagles did this? And then I'll fire up the PFF mock draft simulator and I'll run one anyway. So it's like, we're we're at a sicko number of mock drafts at this point yeah. in draft season. So I don't know what the exact number is. Kay, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't even want to know. It's like it's like looking at your phone usage number. You yes, know, sometimes it's like, wants to oh, let's, let's, let's see how many <laughs> hours that I spent on my phone. Oh, Lord, I need help. Like, it's one of those things. But for me, it's just mock drafts. Well, your disease is my benefit because I'm going to get into your head <laughs> over a couple of these things. There's this big debate with the second quarterback up the board, which I love. I love not knowing what's going to happen. Like, all hell will break loose and it'll be great. In your opinion, with what you know from your bajillion mock drafts, Jaden or Drake May, who's got the edge between these two quarterback prospects with the fits that are allowed? So it feels like it feels like Jaden Daniels is trending towards that direction to be the pick at number two overall. But if I was the one who was calling the shots for Washington, I would take Drake May. Drake May is my QB two in this draft. He has been wow. really from wire to wire. I mean, Caleb has been my number one QB, but Drake May has been my number two over the last two years. Nobody in college football has more big time throws than this dude. And that includes that one year in 2020 where he was just a true sophomore starting for the first time. And look, Drake Mays just got all the arm talent in the world. Sometimes when we think about arm talent, we think, oh, just those deep ball passes. But it's so much more than that. It's velocity specifically. And when I think about that, I think of throws over the middle. You got to be able to attack over the middle of the field if you are a franchise caliber quarterback in the NFL. The DBs, they're too fast, they're too strong. The linebackers, the same way. Defensive coordinators are too smart. If you just throw outside the numbers, which a lot of college offenses do, and I don't really blame them for it because you know corners aren't just like the, the floor for them isn't nearly as high as it is in the NFL. Right. So you want to take advantage of those guys deep down the field to the sideline. But those over the middle throws. You've got to be able to do that at the NFL level, 10 to 20 yards down the middle of the field, right in between the numbers. It's such a crucial area to attack consistently. Drake May, out of the top eight kind of consensus quarterbacks in this class, he's got the most attempts, he's got the most big time throws, and he's got the second highest PFF passing grade when just throwing in that area. So that is why Drake May to me, is the QB2 in this class, and I'd be taking him at number two for He's Washington. He's so polarizing. I love it. I can't wait to see what happens there. Somebody, uh, sir, uh, uh, YouTube user named Sir Pepperoni said you're a mockaholic. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, that's that's very true. Yeah, I like you need to go, to, think, to, to go whatever, whatever uh, therapy version of mock drafts is. <laughs> okay, the 12-step program. We'll, we'll, we'll figure that out in May. Uh, <laughs> let's talk receivers. You've got your, your Malik's, you've got your Marvin Harrison. He's sort of in a class of his own. Is there a guy we want to give more love to? Who's not getting enough attention outside of, of course, our guy Roman Wilson? Yeah, so I think there's a big debate for like who's wide receiver four, right? You mentioned like the top three who everybody loves no matter what, but then people would go, okay, who's wide receiver four in this class? A lot of people like Brian Thomas Jr. from LSU. Mm -hmm. People talk about Lab McConkey from Georgia, uh, A.D. Mitchell from Texas. I don't think Troy Franklin from Oregon gets enough love okay. and consideration to be that wide receiver four in this class. Really good vertical receiver. I know people were thinking, okay, maybe the combine numbers would have been better, but they were fine. They really were. And when you turn on the tape, you already know that this guy knows how to win vertically, but what separates him from that next tier of other wide receivers that might be still in that bucket, he's a playmaker after the catch. The yards per catch average is pretty high, even with a high average depth of target, which normally it's one or the other, right? Normally either the average depth of target is really high because you're getting it deep down the field and you're not really getting yards after the catch, or you're getting the ball much quicker, more manufactured, and they're giving you room to run after the catch. But it's kind of rare and you have to point out when players are able to do both of those things. And I just love the footwork of, of Troy Franklin and how he always wants to get those extra yards, whether it's through contact, but it's specifically making players miss. You see on the field right there, those force miss tackles. It's something that that playmaker mentality in him, it doesn't exist in every wide receiver, especially every vertical receiver. So this is just a dude who I think is going to get you every yard he possibly can with his athleticism. And that's why I think he should get considered for that fourth best wide receiver in this class. So when we're talking like, let's talk fit here, I'm thinking, oh, I don't know, the Buffalo Bills, they they could use somebody at the end of that first round. Maybe the Lions, that would sure them up in the NFC North. I'm thinking like always the Chiefs, I would expect to maybe get someone. Is there a team that you like for him? I mean, those would be the three yeah. that I would probably name, right? Because I don't know if he's going to go higher than that, right? No. The Colts need a wide receiver at 15. The Jags need a wide receiver at 17. But I don't think Franklin's going to go that high in the draft. But I do think there is a way that he could sneak into the back end of the first round. You mentioned, obviously, the Bills. They need to replace a lot of production so he could be there for them. I 
I don't I don't think the Lions are going to do it, but like wide receiver is kind of sneaky for them. You know, like they could add another wide receiver and then you've got Jamison Williams to stretch it deep down the field. You have Amon Ross St. Brown right. and like Franklin can be, nice. be this. That'd be nice. Right. He could be like this fancy footwork kind of intermediate wide receiver to give them that trio there along with Sam Laporta and Jameer Gibbs and all those guys. So, uh, yeah, those three that you named, I'm, I'm right there with you. I think those are the three targets for him if he's going to go in the first. All right. Trevor, sick pup, sick him Let's do this. Uh, you're going through your, your, your mock drafts, your you know, algorithms, your abacus of stuff, whatever, which team, and honestly, at PFF has, it's the shit. Like, it is, it is the best draft simulator, the best info I'm always looking at. I mean, that Josh Allen trade happens this morning, I'm there. Where was he, where was he graded on the edge? 11th, which was surprising, but like, I write, that's what I do. I go right to PFF and say, let's talk about this, what makes sense, what doesn't make sense, in the draft areas when you guys really, really crush. But is there a team like, near, you know, we always talk about what's going on at the top, it's going to be like uh, Michigas when it comes to, you know, like the, the, quarterback position let's go end of first round is there a team that you find fascinating that could make a splash so i mean detroit is one of those teams right because i i am fascinated always by what dan campbell and what brad holmes are going to do like yeah. which kind of players they're going to target what they're going to do at the back end of the first round so they intrigued me i wanted to give them a shout out but i wonder what the eagles are going to do you know i was listening to you you know start off the show and you're right the eagles Went to a Super Bowl two years ago, started off last year really hot, and then, man, things did not end well for them the year before. Mm -hmm. So what are they going to do? Now, they have a first-round pick at number 22, but they also have two second-round picks, too. So they could get aggressive here. Like, I look at the Denver Broncos sitting at number 12 overall. They need, an, they need a second-round pick right now. Does Philly package number 22 overall and maybe their second second round pick, the later one, to Ooh. move up to within the top 12? And they could go get an offensive lineman that they love to, they'd love to get, right? I mean, I think about Talise Fuanga, the offensive tackle from Oregon State. Okay, you put him at right guard next year, and then whenever Lane Johnson retires, you just move him straight to right tackle, and it's just a brilliant transition. Or you can go up and get a corner that they so desperately need, a Quinion Mitchell, a Terry on Arnold. Terry on Arnold actually fits perfectly with what Howie Roseman normally drafts. So to me, I look at the Eagles because of their situation. They're sort of in a... You know, like a teetering point, like, okay, is yeah. the winning window kind of closing for us or are we going to hit our foot on the gas and try to keep it open as long as possible? So if they could trade up, then I think that tells you that they're still all in on who they got on the roster Dude, right now. No matter what the draft is, what year, where they're drafting, that that is like I could close my eyes and which team are you most fascinated by? It's almost always going to be the Eagles as long as Howie's there. Because, you know, they could, do they do the smart thing? Do they do the reckless thing? Do they get aggressive? There's always this, like, you know, you never know what that Maverick uh, is going to do. And speaking of Maverick, I'm going to bring in Eric, our producer, produced this seg or helped produce part of the segment. Um, and he's got a little something cooked up for us, Trevor, that you said that you'd be down for. Now, I'm, I'm giving the reins to, to Eric. What do you got? Trevor's in, Kay's in, everybody at home. It's National Sibling Day. <laughs> That's go! what it is. National Sibling Day. Congratulations to all that celebrate. We're going to do a little bro down showdown. Do you have any siblings? I do. I have a sister. Shout him her out. name is Tess. That's my sister. Her name is Tess. All right, guys. This is a mock draft. This is super easy. Three categories, sibling base. First one, oh God. NFL we're doing, brothers. So we're doing like his, he's, he's, his advantage is ridiculous. Yeah. I, don't I know. He's a, he's a draft guru. The, the virtuoso over here. Okay, what do we got? All right, so got? NFL brothers, Trevor, you're on the clock. Oh, First God. overall pick. NFL brothers? Mike Zalk Galifianakis is the gif where all just like the numbers and everything are just running <laughs> on you. the screen. That's me with mock draft. Oh God, um, okay, that. so NFL brothers. I'm taking Jim and John Harbaugh, Ooh. right? Because last time they were both in the league together, they're facing off in the Super Bowl. I, I was watching a, a replay of that 2012 Super Bowl. It's like two of the best teams that I've watched in a long time. Fast, physical. Yeah. I'm I'm looking so much forward to these two brothers being in the NFL again. And Jim's crazy. Yeah, I and, find, and I feel like I feel like <laughs> yeah. The, they, I feel like uh, John misses Jim. He needed Jim. Like, he needs him back, and they'll be like, they'll light each a fire under each other's asses, and that'll be great. Am I next? Yeah, you're next. If my brother lived in an RV, I'd be concerned. Okay, who's your pick? <laughs> I'm going to go with, um, you know, I hope you don't pick Travis and Jason. I feel like that's like the low-hanging no, fruit. I'm going to go I'm with basic. the frat brothers of the NFL. Mm. These are my favorite. These two frat brothers. And by that, I mean um, Christian McCaffrey and Kyle Juszczyk. You guys remember this photo? This is just... I don't know, or this video. I don't know what the hell is going on here, but this is. This, I don't care about bloodlines. These are these are two brothers, and then there was an image. 
that was from like the year before or years before. I don't know if Kittle took or whatever yeah. of the two. I mean, this sort of frattery uh, is there is just makes me happy. Look at these guys. They're just getting their vitamin D in. They're doing what you know Huberman would tell them to do. Get some get some sun on your face right when you wake up. And these are the frat brothers that I choose as my NFL brothers. I you love go. it. Uh, I was gonna pick um, Aaron Rodgers and the Bears. Ooh, big brother, little brother, yeah, but I feel like that's the bears. jumping yeah, the big shark. Brother, little brother. Uh, I'm gonna go a little bit of a throwback. I'm gonna go Rob and Rex Ryan. That's my pick. I mean, they does, just seem like. Does it still count? I guess yeah. it does. I guess it does. Okay. They, okay. they seem like brothers that want to judge, you know. And look at them on this tandem bicycle. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. Look at that. <laughs> oh, you had a third great. seat on there. You, you win. Throw me you in. win. You win. Ask gas or grass. Nobody rides for free. You know. God damn it! That's such a good value pick by you. You picked third in that one. What did you say about? <laughs> Ask gas or grass. Nobody rides for free on the tandem bicycle. I. Anyways, it's a bumper sticker. Let's go get, a, said let's that go get a snack. Go. Well, let's go. What else? All right. Uh, next. If, if we didn't get canceled for me naming the strip club in Green Bay, I think we're okay. Continue. It's all right. Anyways, all right. Uh, the next pick is uh, uh, TV film. Not with me. I did not take Aaron to the strip club. TV or film siblings. Uh, Trevor, you're on the clock. Who you got? Uh, first of all, I was I was a little worried about your pick there. I thought that that was an absolute reach, and then the, tan the, the tandem bike came up, and I realized that you got the steal of the draft there. So yeah, good good on you. Okay, film. This is the first pairing that came to my mind, so I got to go with it. Fulton Reed and Dean Portman from Mighty Ducks D2, the movie. Oh my God, this is the so Bash bad. Brothers, baby. This is, I grew up. I grew up playing hockey, so this was like I, I watched D2, Mighty Ducks a million times. When I'm in when I'm in my front yard or whatever, just like playing hockey, whatever. I think I'm playing Team Iceland. You know, like I think yeah. I'm about to like conquer the world, like good versus evil. When I'm scoring a goal, and so. I had to go with that throwback because uh, those are the first two that I thought of. So I'm going with the they Bash They were Brothers. so badass, and they had the bandanas, oh, and then they were just yeah, so baby. cool. I loved that. What a good movie. Yeah. Kay, you're up. That's going to be tough to beat. Who you got? How do you beat Emilio Film. Estevez and Cake Eater? And the, I can't do it. Um, Let's fly together. Coach Bombay. Um, quack, 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 quack. Uh, you listen, my head went right to, to TJF. You asked, you called me yesterday, and you go, and I was thinking, like, and I loved, this wasn't on TJF, but I loved Sister, Sister. I loved, like, Tia and Tamara. I, became, I had, like, a, I had a Phase. I don't know if everybody has this phase of like you, I can, you cannot believe like what it would be like to have a twin. Twins are fascinating to me. Um, honorable mention here. I was gonna go uh, Bud and Kelly Bundy. Mm. Always loved them. Um, um, but I'm gonna go with the twin vibe. But I'm gonna go back to the parent trap, which makes which we talk about entirely too much on this on this program, Trevor. And I'm sorry to bring it back there. But these are uh, it's Annie and Hallie, right? Annie and Hallie yep. Parker. If we could scroll, that'd be great. Um, thank you, Hallie Parky Parker. Annie James. Okay, the twin sisters from the Parent Trap. Lindsay Lohan plays you know the same person in both roles, and I think that's that's the pick. I, I think you blew everybody's mind on that. Yeah. That's that's so meta. Uh, mine is twins: Danny DeVito, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Good. I mean, come on, Good. look at that. <laughs> born in a test tube, and uh, they try to find their mom. We're so. going to do the last one in break. Yeah, we'll do it Trevor, in break. don't go anywhere. We'll be back. We have a big show, guys. Roman Wilson. You're excited to hear from him. Oh, yes. What do you want to ask Roman's him? the best. Roman? Yeah, about its toughness. I mean, uh, Trevor, uh, Trevor spoke to it. Like, his rise, his toughness, his blocking ability. Yeah. Uh, and just against man coverage, he tops all those wide receivers in terms of separation, which I think says a lot about him. But, like... You're, it's such a strong name. How do you live up to being named Roman? Roman? I was trying to think of games to come up with. Roman, I mean, uh, even like, ro even just like Roman from Succession. Like you're never gonna. You've got to be good. Like you yeah. have to be. Whatever you're doing in life, you have to be very yeah. good if That's you are named Roman. Like, like there's like, no, there's, yeah, there's no your, debate. It's fate. Kid, it's fate at that point. Trevor, you name your kid Ace. It's like, what do you? You better be freaking <laughs> the best thing ever. Like you can't. It's crazy. Yeah. Okay, let's do... Uh, round three okay. is wild card siblings. Trevor, we're going to start with you. This could be anybody. It could be Pimanti Brothers, Sandwiches, whatever you want. Do whatever you want. <laughs> Pimanti Brothers, yeah. smart. Like okay. it. Okay, good. Well, if it's wild card and anybody's on the table, I got to go with my sibling. I have a little mm. sister. Uh, she's 11 years younger than me. Uh, she is oh. one of my favorite human beings in the world. I have I have shared some of the hardest laughs of my life with my sister, Alexis. She is uh, just... Absolutely wonderful. And and here, if I had to pick any sibling in the world, obviously I have to pick mine because I'm incredibly grateful to have her. And so it, there's there's no other choice here. I don't even think we can go. I'm just yeah, gonna go okay. with I'm gonna go with my brother, but this is like not a cute story. That's that's me, my brother, by the way. I was blonde going, <laughs> this is ridiculous. Some, some somewhere in the Midwest or Poland, I don't know. My brother um <laughs> called me Jackson my whole life. Uh. He terrorized me. Uh, there's a story about us being on the farm in Poland, and my brother literally cut off a chicken's head. Oh boy. With a, had a rope around the neck, cut its head and chased me around it, sat on me and 
waved it as blood dripped on me. So that's Adam. See, love you. See, but that's you know that 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 could Formative. be good big brothering. Formative. You know, you gotta have you gotta have some story yeah. like that. I didn't quite go that far, yeah, but, but he's the reason I, I like also, he's the reason I know like all of Metallica and I know you know every every Pearl Jam album and I know everything about X Men. So love you, brother. Uh, Look, when my sister yeah. was, I think, like six years old, I set up the pillows in our living room and made her go through like football drills where she wasn't allowed to fumble it. And I was hitting her with these giant, you know, pillows. She's fine, everybody. Oh, so now She's we're totally getting, fine. Now we're but, getting, look at what an interviewer I am. Now we're getting to the real story. It's all gotta, you gotta, you, 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 gotta. Like, you gotta sometimes have the big brother lessons. And that yeah. was yours. What's and yours? That was uh, yours? Quick, I'm going with my sister, Tess. That's oh, who I'm going with. Go. There we are. Wait, we're all Cute. Yeah, I know. Look at us. We win siblings day. Tell me about Tess. Uh, that's my sister, Tess. She's amazing. She's a teacher back in that's Milwaukee. That's Aikman on the right side? Who is that? <laughs> that's my dad and that's my <laughs> my cousin Josh, but that's me at my birthday party. Tess amazing. is amazing. I love her to death. She was my cool older sister. Did all our first together. Wait, uh, this was so cute. Yeah. Trevor Sikama, we appreciate you so much. You absolutely crushed that. Will you come back? Yeah, absolutely, guys. I appreciate you having me on. This is a lot of fun. You crushed it. Keep up the good work and hopefully take a nap at some point. You sick, sick man. Thanks, guys. See ya. Bye. I haven't done the math, so this might be wrong, but I'm going to guess that there's 14 days until the draft? No. 15? 15 days, right? It's Wednesday? 15 days until the NFL draft in Detroit. And here's one thing as we are getting you set for the draft, one thing you need to know about NC State linebacker Peyton Wilson. And that thing is that he did the thing that I love most. He bet on himself this year, and he won big time. Let me explain. So Wilson misses all of 2021. He's got a bum shoulder. And then after an impressive 2022 follow-up, he was set to enter last year's draft, okay? There were some lingering questions. People were like, well, I don't know if I like him. There's health stuff. There's blah, blah, blah. You know, everybody, like, uh, turned him into a, a question mark. Um, and that made him decide to return for one more year to try to improve his stock even more at Rally and um, – it really paid off, okay? They had to be, really think about that as a kid. What a tough freaking decision that is to make. This past season, he racks up, he says, bet, I'm gonna stand on me. ACC best, 138 tackles. Unanimous All-American, tears laughing back there that I said stand on something. <laughs> Won the Butkus Award uh, as college football's best linebacker and the Bernardic Award as the best defensive player in the entire country. So all of that cements him. This is now a, a near lock, guys, to be the top off-ball LB taken in the draft. And if you don't believe me, listen to what the future Hall of Famer, Luke Keekley had to say about him. At the draft, you know, I, I always look at linebackers, and there's a guy that I loved watching for a long time up at NC State, Peyton Wilson. Hey, he's taller than me, and he's faster than me, and, um, and he's going to be in the NFL. We'll look at him run right there. He's, he's got great hair. He's jacked. Right now, Peyton's projected to go anywhere from the mid-first or into the second round. I'm looking at you, Seahawks. I'm looking at Packers. I'm looking at Ravens. Uh, they need a Patrick Queen replacement. We love, we love in the world when someone says, you know what? Great. I'm going to bet on myself. You've got questions. I've got answers. You know who does that? Champions do that. Those teams, if you want this kind of a vibe, go ahead and draft yourself a Peyton Wilson. All right, we've got a guy who's got two of these things under his belt, two-time Super Bowl champion, um, one of the hardest-working undrafted free agents, truly um, turned superstar wide receiver for the past in the, in the greatest time of their dynasty for the Jets, the Bills, and more, uh, and a professional lax bro, too, and he owns a gym. He just does it all. Chris Hogan, how the hell are you? I'm doing good. I like the professional lax bro. That's great. <laughs> it's National Siblings Day, so I should have said lax bros are my favorite. Lax bros are good, a good vibe. Do you still play lacrosse? How does that go? Like recreationally? Yeah, I'm co well, I'm coaching it now. So my son, okay. my son's seven, so I, I'm, I get out there now. So but I'm, you get I'm, out there and like you're doing the thing? No, no, absolutely not. <laughs> I can't run like that anymore. So now I just, you know, prey on, you know, pick on little seven-year-olds and run them around the field. You know, no, I literally... Chris, I literally can't believe that you have a seven-year-old. I can't, I can't, I don't understand. I have two seven-year-olds. I know, I can't. Okay, great. So I, I can double, I double don't understand. Like, how, <laughs> how, do you ever, can you believe they're seven? No, no, you and me both. I kind of wake up every single day thinking that, you know, these kids are not going to school or going to uh, second grade next year or getting on the bus by themselves and doing all these things. But yeah, they're two seven-year-olds. Um, last time I talked to you, it was you, me, and Gronk. So you and I didn't really get to talk that much because it was you and Gronk. But there was like a bit of a, a bit of a convo 
about you two reuniting on the field flag football style. Please tell me <laughs> there's been some traction with that. <laughs> I mean, if you can get on that guy's schedule, then maybe we <laughs> could do something like that. But I mean, flag football too. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm still in it. You know, I, I gotta, I'm coaching the, my seven year old in flag football too. So I'm still heavily invested wow. into, you know, getting back into playing one of these sports at some point, but um, who knows, you know, the Olympics is coming up, right? Isn't the flag hey, football going to be in the Olympics? So, there we go. You know, could be a comeback. You I, never know. Chris, you should get involved in that for real. <laughs> 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 I have to start running again and actually get it. Yeah, you know, we never say never. What do you think's more surprising? Because like I, lo I love seeing you because it just brings me right back to those like wild, those awesome years uh, with the Patriots. What's more surprising to you that Gerard Mayo is the head coach of the New England Patriots or that Matthew Slater retired? That's a tough one. I didn't think Slate was ever going to retire. To be mm -hmm. honest with you, I thought he was literally just going to play forever. Um, it, it, Gerard being the head coach. I mean, I can't even imagine what that meeting room was like on Monday when they came back to the off season with someone else standing up in front of that room and everyone probably not like actually like fearing for their life or to be called on by Bill. So I'm sure Gerard had a little bit more of a laid back approach or maybe he did. I don't know. Maybe it was, but I'm sure it was definitely a much different meeting room, especially the guys that have been in a meeting room with Bill. It's, it's not always a pleasant experience. So I know that, uh, I know that he's probably he brought some some different energy with him this week when they got back to um, off season. What's the biggest knowing what those meetings are like? Just what's the biggest change? It sounds like relief, is it? But what do you think the relief. biggest? Yeah, it's relieving. How interesting yeah. is that? But you but he gave you two rings, didn't he? Or no? Yeah, no, he did. At... Listen, hey, I I have I got nothing but good things to say about Bill. But I mean, being in being in those. <laughs> Being in those Monday meetings sometimes, and if you didn't have a good game or you did something wrong, there was a high chance that he was going to call you. I've been on the opposite end of those, and they're not fun. But you know, he got the he that was his way of getting the best out of you. So yeah, it it takes a, a very special type of player to want to be able to sit through those meetings, kind of take that um, criticism, I'll just lightly call it, and yeah. then be able to keep doing it every single day. <laughs> When you think about Gerard in this role, there's yeah. so much on his plate. And I'm, I'm hearing like the, I don't know if, how plugged in you are to like listening to what he's saying to the media and all. Like, I don't even know how you attack that. Cause of course, part of you is like, from, you know, like you can say what you want, you gronk all of you. It's, it's in your head, like the training of him, the holding back, the way, the mentality, like Gronk comes on my show, Gronk's all over, you know that. He mm -hmm. still has moments and he admits to them where he's like, oh, I had like a Belichick like, you know, don't give it all there. Don't what like it's sort of ingrained in you. So if you're Gerard Mayo, like how do you even attack the hole filled by Bill Belichick? I still talk like that. Like, I feel like I need to yeah. hold everything back. Um, wow. I, I listen, I think it's like Gerard. I think he said it in his first press conference. Like this is this is his team now. This is a, to a completely different organization. And as hard as it is for everyone to accept and to come to this reality that Bill Belichick is not the head coach of the New England Patriots. Gerard's going to run it his way, and I think that I, I think that that will be voiced. I think there are some certain things. I mean, listen, Gerard played underneath Bill. I'm sure he's going to take some of what he learned from Bill and, and kind of carry it on over to his head coaching experience. But I got to imagine that the way that he's speaking to the media, like his different type of energy, he's going to allow these guys to have a little bit more of a voice um to use their platform so i can't imagine that it's always going to be about you know you the team or refer to gerard right so that was always the the media training that bill would give and i it's going to be a, it's going to be so different um but i'm excited for it i'm excited for gerard i think he's going to do awesome you know listen he's got a a, a tall task in front of mm -hmm. him you know and a number three draft pick that everyone is <sighs> At, you know, on the, you know, just at the edge of their seat waiting to see what they do. But um, I, I just, I, to be honest with you, I hope they just give them the time. I really do. I yeah, hope they so give them the time to like? kind of grow give, this. You know, you're, you're a two-time Super Bowl champion. You know Gerard Mayo. You knew Belichick. You know the quarterback situation. Like, what yeah. is realistic? What, is, what are realistic expectations? And, like, what kind of time you talking here? I mean, uh, look what Dan Campbell did in Detroit, right? They gave him the time, man. He built – he – he created a culture. He changed that entire city, that entire organization around, and it took him. It took him a few years to do so. Uh, we can't sit here and expect the New England Patriots to all of a sudden go to a Super Bowl contender right away. All right, they won four games last year, and 
I think that the over under on how many games they're going to win this year is, is, uh, is four, I, I think again. So, um, I think they, I think I know that Kraft is going to be able to give him the time. I just hope that there's not, there's no added pressure. Right. I mean, I think he's got to kind of do it his own way. He's got to draft players. He's got to get, bring in the players that he wants to bring in and, and then we'll see what happens. I mean, I think that they're going to be a better team this year. Obviously, you know, everyone stays healthy and, and they're able to kind of compete a little bit more. Um, you know, give him, give him a couple years. Why, I mean, years. what's like, what, what's the hurt in doing that? Everyone wants to, I know it's like a win now type of league, but why, if you just want to keep, be one of these organizations that just has this turnover every single year, year in and year out, what's the ex, what's the reality of the expectations for the actually to have a winning program? No, you'll be right? Chicago. It's, exactly. Right. Sure so not. like, I think that's my biggest fear is like, if we get into this world of like, okay, cool, we're going to take a quarterback every single year in the draft. And then we're going to have a new head coaching every single two years and a new, complete new coaching staff. Like, no, nah, that doesn't work. Yeah. That's not how the NFL works. It's never going to work. You got to have some sort of consistency and establish their own culture and his own way of doing things. Give them, uh, I'll, I'll, here's my, here's my bet. The okay. Patriots make the playoffs in year two. The Patriots make the playoffs in year two. I think that's. Yeah. I think that that would be. Uh, I, that's realistic, and I think that, that could I happen, so. especially with what's going on elsewhere. Uh, yeah. You know, who knows? Like after this year, what happens with Aaron Rodgers? Who knows what kind of a rebuild muck mud the uh, the the Bills are in? I think I think RKK will give consistency, and I weirdly like. I know those fans are are nutty up there in New England. You know it better yeah. than anybody, but yeah. I actually think that they get what's going on. A Patriots so. fan is very smart truly yeah. like they 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 i don't think that there's grandiose expectations or i think that i i really do it's not even in chicago they're like what i think new england knows what's going on in this in this world and that's sort of up front i'm looking at fanduel sportsbook right now uh it's five, five and a half games over yeah. under yeah i'm over i think they're gonna win more than five games this year so, I, listen they were close to winning more than five games last yeah. year but True. they just had a couple of bad you know Couple of bad fourth quarter drives, turn the ball over, and I mean, we could have been looking at a seven. I mean, I'm, listen, I'm not gonna say they went to the playoffs last year, but I mean, they could have easily won seven, maybe eight games, and um, could have maybe been a little bit more consideration at the end of the season. But that's you know, it's football. It's not the way things happen. So, if they don't win, I'd be very surprised if they didn't win over five games this year. I yeah. think Gerard's gonna do a really good job. I think these guys are. You keep excited. saying that. Why? Why? You know him. Like he's, I, you said. Just, you said I'm, earlier he's gonna be awesome. He's gonna do all. Like what is? I'm just knowing such a him. big fan. Like, mm. listen, and you go. We brought in one of our own, right? We we a guy that's played, a guy that had success, a guy that won championships, a guy that knows how to like get this done. It was these. It, it could go both ways, right? He could be a, and this could be a complete flop, and he could not know how to coach, but he has. Listen, he's got a ton of upside. He's got to learn how to be a head coach and manage a football game and do all of these different sort of things. But yeah. he's surrounding himself with, you know, he brought Elliot Wolf, Alex Van Pelt. He brought in all these guys to kind of help him do all of these sure. different things, Huge right? So he's not marks. always, he's not just going to put it on himself. Yeah. Right. I, and I don't think anyone expects that. I don't think RKK expects that. And to your point, I don't think the Patriots fans expect yeah. it to just to put it all on, on Gerard. So, I, I'm, I'm, listen, I'm excited about it. I, yeah. Regardless I of what too. everyone I, else I, thinks, I, yeah. I think he's going to be a hell of a head coach. I, I, I mean, I agree. I, 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 long before it was announced, I was like, they should look into, there was like weird, like somebody was trying to try up there, somebody up there in Foxborough trying to like say something about Gerard Mayo. I was like, are you guys joking? He's the most beloved person and they shouldn't be looking anywhere else if they're looking for a head coach. It yeah. should be internally and give Gerard Mayo the shot here. That said, what should they do at three? quarterback I, I, <laughs> unless a unless a herschel walker type trade comes to, to okay. their you know someone calls wow. right and this is like a once in a lifetime opportunity for them to turn down and you know get some sort of generational type players plus like 10 first round draft picks right for the next you know couple of years for them to rebuild i don't see how you not how, how you can't draft a quarterback it's like our one it's our biggest, obviously, over our head looming need for our offense is to have someone be a quarterback. Is Jacoby Brissett the answer? I, I love Jacoby. Yeah. I played with Jacoby. I think he's a great player. I, I don't think that he's necessarily the answer for the future of the organization. So who is? Is it Jaden? Is it May? And I'm, I'm not even saying what you think. Knowing Mayo, who's at these pro, who's he take? Who are they taking? Uh, 
I, I, I'm Jaden. Listen, I, I do a podcast with Chris Price of the of the Boston Globe. Woo-hoo! He was down there at LSU's uh, pro day. I, I think they had like ten or eleven Patriot scouts down there. You're not sending that many people down to a pro day unless you're taking this kid with a third overall draft <laughs> pick. You know, so kids, kids got an unbelievable talent. He's a great athlete. I think that's kind of the spark that this this team is going to want. Um, Van Pelt has worked with guys like this before guys that can move around in the pocket. I mean, kids got a good arm, it, uh, you know, but again, my feeling on quarterbacks is, you know, we, we're not really going to know until August, right? I mean, this kid can do all the things in college and he can make all the throws at his pro day, but how good is he actually going to be in the NFL? Time will tell. Okay. Well, we had him and he did respond to this. I think we have this tweet before you go. I want to show you that he did respond. Jaden Daniels did his, his account um, responding to, you know, him meeting with the command or whatever. He's looking forward to his upcoming visits, talking about him going to New England, which uh, is interesting that he, you know, wanting to play New England over Washington. We'll see if that happens. We also, I had Lad McConkey on the show the other day. Okay. okay? I met him in studio. He was an absolute gem. I've heard his name. He's had multiple visits with the Patriots uh, as well. And, and they're talking about fits. I just got to ask you, is, is Lad McConkey just the most Patriots wide receiver name you've ever heard? So typical. What, because of his name or? or... <laughs> I, I'm just asking, what do you think just, about that? Is he a fit? Uh, yeah, of course he could be a fit. I mean, I, I watched the kid run routes yeah. and I, I saw some of his stuff that he did at the combine um, and his pro day. I mean, kick and run routes. There's no question about it. I mean, he's he's one of those type players. He can play inside, he can play outside. I mean, he can move, he would fit seamlessly in any single organization, in any single team. Um, I, I mean, I would love it. I mean, he would, uh, you know, keep it keep it going for us uh, slot receivers. <laughs> Lad <laughs> McConkey, or, you know, he could he could easily switch up to Lax. And, I mean, how could you not like that? I mean, La- a guy I like mean. Lad McConkey. I mean, that's just, <laughs> I'm a fan already. I don't even know the kid. Chris, give me, give me a podcast plug before you go. Uh, the Patriots Report. Uh, we're like, you know, right now it's like once a week, me and Chris Price in the Boston Globe. Amazing. Um, it's, yeah, it's a lot of fun. I get to talk, get to talk football last year. Not so great. We had to kind of come up with a lot of more fun, entertaining things instead of talking about losses yeah. and how bad Mac Jones was, but Hey, we had fun with it. And now we're having a little bit more fun talking about the draft. Listen, you've and, gone on everybody's drive. podcast too. You know what I want to hear on that? I want Chris and say hi to Chris for me. Uh, you know, get Gronk, get, get your ass on the show. Yo, Julian, <laughs> Dola, Gerard, come sit down, do that. And I can't, uh, I can't wait the, to see the, what happens. The, Julian, come on. That, that's he's too big time. He's got Chris, his own thing going. I have to like, you yeah, stop have saying to, that. I have to pay. <laughs> You're the best. Appreciate you. Congrats on the podcast, on everything, on coaching, uh, on on all of the things as always. You're the best, man. Thank you. Talk Good to, to see you later. Chris Price, right. interesting. Uh, Chris Price and Chris Hogan on that podcast, guys. Check it out. And up next, oh, here he is, Roman Wilson, coming at you at a four three speed. Next. Problem. Very smart. Let's do that. Cool, 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 cool. Let me look at some of this. Cancel, cancel, create channel. Um, 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 um. Wow, he was really great. No. Nothing. You do you. Um, 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 um. Eric, him right, him coming right out there and just being like, yeah, it's, those meetings must not suck. Mm. Without Bill. Yeah. Wild. They took down. Uh, well, we have that shot of Trevor, the Roman one. Oh, I don't think so. We're not going to use it? I don't think. Okay, I was after Do you think it was too. super strong? Uh, I think it was somebody else saying it. Yeah. Uh, I think I like the no block, no rock mentality from Harbaugh, if you want to call that back, because that's um, I think if it was somebody, I, I don't want to play it back. Okay. I don't want to waste cool. time, because I think we're running out of time. Thank we, you, though. If we need it. Thank you. Um, Eric, feel free to text me if there's stuff, you, you know, as we wind down that you want me to get to. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Where is Roman coming to us from? Ooh, see, just 
I don't have any lipstick, and I look crazy. You guys wanna do a what's really quick, what's in my purse? Lip liner, no lip gloss or lipstick. Car keys, debit card, no wallet. I don't have a wallet. Sunnies, license, eye drops, random pair of earrings, mm, charger that is not charged, and another one random earring. Get, get ready with me also in here randomly, I believe I have random photos of me from the FanDuel North Carolina thing with Luke Keekley. Oh, hi, Jonathan Stewart and Luke Keekley. What up? Never took him out of here. What was that, a month ago? Why? You don't know if you, you never know when you need pictures. All right, let's do this. My next guest was a national champ is is a national champion, second team, all Big Ten wide receiver at the University of Michigan. The Michigan men love my show, what can I say? After an impressive combine and senior bowl, um, I'm gonna go ahead and say he's the fastest rising star in this year's draft. Roman Wilson, how the heck are you this morning? I'm, I'm doing great, bro. I really appreciate that introduction. That was, uh, that was elite. And uh, I'm, I'm really sitting here watching the show like it's a good show. Like I've been watching it this, uh, this morning. Thank you, I, Roman. <laughs> I appreciate you, and I'm sure you're glad that Bill Belichick has no chance of being your coach after hearing what Chris Hogan, two-time Super Bowl champ, just said about you. I'd like you to be a Super Bowl champion, and I'm really excited to get to know you. And I'd ask you if all of these pre-draft interviews uh, made you nervous, but I can already tell uh, from talking to you and from this that you don't mind being the center of attention. You got a vlog, you got YouTube, over 32,000 subs. What inspired you, my friend? Oh, no. <laughs> Let's go. What inspired you to share your life as a college athlete with the world? Uh, it really started as me. Um, when I get older, I want to be able to look back at it and uh, have these memories that are going to, you know, be there forever. And, uh, you know, even as I get older and I look back right now, like just watching this right now, like this is a good, uh, good memory of mine that I got to spend uh, with some close family members and some close friends and, you know, I just want to cherish these memories for the rest of my life, you know, and uh, share with other people and let them know what it's like to live my life. It's super smart. I love it. Now, when these draft projections and everybody's got an opinion and everybody's doing their thing, when they first came out, I was seeing you in like fourth, fifth round, whatever. Now, excuse me, you got to get suited and booted potentially here. Late day one, early day two pick. In your mind, what were the questions that you were able to answer for those who had them that led to this rise? Yeah, um, just being like a, a number one receiver, I feel like being able to step up and, uh, you know, just make plays consistently. For me, that was a big thing. Like you said, uh, I was like fourth, fifth round last year. And, uh, you know, I really just, I wrote that down in my book and, you know, I looked at it every day and I just put my head down. And I just started working. I just started grinding, uh, trying to get better every single way I can. And, you know, it's finally paying off. It's a real blessing. What's the way you got better? What is the, the way that you're most proud of, the thing that you worked on the most? Uh, everything. I mean, I feel like if I run a route, it, it's just never going to be perfect. I feel like I'm always trying to push to get better. I'm always trying to watch more film. I'm always trying to emulate guys and, you know, take parts of my game and steal parts from other people's games and put them together or put my own spin on it and just really try to, you know, figure this thing out because there's, there's so many ways to go about running routes or making plays and, it was really just trying to be a jack of all trades, you know, just have everything in my tool belt. Roman, I wonder, I wonder if that one-handed grab at the combine helped your cause. <laughs> I don't know, like, I, okay, so at the combine, <laughs> if you're the last receiver, like, y'all supposed to celebrate. So, like, I made this catch, I, I'm looking back, and, and no one was running down with me. Someone <laughs> probably caught my catch, but uh, it, was, it was a great catch, great ball, and uh it was a good moment for me. You know, I was, I was uh, excited about it. I think that's, no, got, no, I no think that's, got, that's a little something to do with, I think, the meteoric rise. You know, I, just, just, just a little bit. Well, I mean, it's not the only one, right? You had that amazing helmet catch. Don't think we're not going to talk about it against Nebraska here, right? So <laughs> that was amazing. You had the entire NFL watching you on the one that we just saw, though, from the Combine. Where does that rank in terms of your biggest catches? Uh, I mean, pretty low. <laughs> I mean, the one at the Combine, uh... I mean, there's routes on air. There's no DB. There's no competition. Right. Like, I'll put that like 
by 10. I can't wait to see you in the NFL. <laughs> yeah, I really appreciate that. <laughs> you, lead, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. you lead all wide receivers in this year's draft when it comes to separation against man, okay? Size, toughness. That always comes under question under the microscope in the draft. When you see your name at the top of this list, what should, what are you telling people about you as a player? Uh, that I'm, I'm the real deal. You know, that's how, that's how I feel when I see my name on the top. Uh, I feel like you got to respect me. Uh, you know, stats don't lie, numbers don't lie, and uh, you know, being number one is a, that's not a, it's not a joke. It's not something to play with, and I take a lot of pride in that. I worked hard to, to work on my man separation skills, and you know, it pays off. I'm number one. And last year you had so there was so much talent on this offense at Michigan, right? The ball got distributed a lot. Um, I imagine you're only getting started. Your game's going to be elevated much more in the NFL. <laughs> I, I sure hope so. I feel like I have a lot of room to grow and a lot of room to get better. Um, and I'm just going to keep sticking my head down and keep grinding and doing everything I can to get better and try to elevate my game. And, you know, hopefully one day I can have that rub off on some of the younger guys at Michigan and they start balling out too. We've got a lot of, a lot of good guys in that, in that room still. Are they going to ball out without Jim? Oh yeah. They're they going to ball out for sure. Tell me about Jim. A lot of talk about Jim's a wild one. I need your, I need, I need a story. Give me a Jim story. I mean, he's really a great guy. You never know what you're going to expect, but he's always positive, always uh, making people laugh. And uh, my favorite story, so um, I'm a big cold tub guy, so I'm always trying to get in the cold tub. And uh, one day I walk past, and he's in the cold tub with, uh, with the khakis on and the, and the polo on. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it was just – for me, it was just uh, it was just something to see. It was a sight. I was, Why uh, did he do that? I mean, that's just him, man. He's just uh, – I think uh, we had like this Amazon documentary before I got to Michigan. Uh, he was in the cold tub then, like shoes on, like everything. That's just that's just how he rolls. What do you mean that's just how he rolls? Everybody just tells me. I mean, I have Taylor Lewan. I have like all like JJ McCarthy, Cornelia. They're all t that's just he he's just that's how he. What? What do you mean you just get in the cold tub with shoes on? And why? I mean, <laughs> I mean that's just him. Like if you get it, you get it. If you don't, like you probably won't understand him. Like he's uh, he's really one of a kind. And uh, he's just a special type of coach, you know what I mean? Like, I don't see too many coaches doing that. And, uh, you know, he just knows how to win, too. You're doing your, an episode of your vlog on YouTube with over 32,000 subscribers. And you, the whole episode has to be about the one thing that Jim Harbaugh taught you, the one piece of advice, the thing you're most grateful for. What's that one thing? Uh, just knowing how to win, uh, knowing how to sacrifice, like, experiences and, and things like that and time to benefit the team and, and just win, you know, that's the biggest thing he, he taught me how to do is like nothing else matters if you don't win. Gosh, cause we got these NFL dudes, Twitter's going crazy because every, you know, we, I got, I had Dante Whitner who played with Jim at the Niners saying that he thinks he's going to take this team to the AFC championship in, in the division with Patrick Wilms, that he's, that Jim is that big of a game changer that he could turn around a franchise right away. And it's, yeah, I almost think the NFL might be sleeping on him for round two of his, his uh, experience. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, he's done it before. Uh, he's done it once. He's done it twice. I'm pretty sure he's going to do it a third time. Uh, so <laughs> you'd like to play for him. Coach, right? You wouldn't That's mind playing for him again. What up, coach? No, definitely not. I I'd love to go to the Chargers and, uh, you know, help them win the Super Bowl. I mean, when you see coach shedding these receivers saying, Keenan, get your ass to Chicago and see you, Mike Williams, are you like? <laughs> uh, I mean, a little bit. I mean, they got, I mean, receivers is, is something they definitely need and, uh, you know, I'm a guy that Coach Harbaugh knows, so yeah. I feel like it's a good thing. You had a top 30 visit with uh, the Titans, okay? Okay, you, you saw those throws from Will Levis last year. They've got veterans. they got DeAndre Hopkins, one of the best to do it. Calvin Ridley is there now. How did the visit go for you? Oh, for me, uh, they definitely stood out for me. They're a team that kind of reminds me of Michigan. You know, they're trying, to, they're trying to rebuild their team and, you know, start with the foundation, start with the culture. I really felt that. I feel like they really believe believe in the guys that they have, and you know, I feel like they can see a see a role for me in that offense. Mm, your for, uh, your former wide receiver uh, buddy Cornelius Johnson, he was on our show, and he said some of the things that these NFL teams are asking him um, were, were like, which Michigan teammate he'd bring along if they were allowed to draft him as well. How are you answering that question? Uh, for me, you know, I, I always say, uh, Mikey, Mikey Sanders still, uh, he gets me better day in and day out. Um, I also disrespect him so much being a guy who was a receiver that switched to DB and who's now one of the best nickels in the, in the country. 
You know, it, that's not an easy thing to do. I mean, this is the second year being a nickel, and he's already one of the best, and he has so much more room to grow. And um, he's, he's a great dude, and I would love to play with him whatever any team picks me. Well, we know that you love um, college football 14 on Xbox. You know I have no idea what that is. I have no idea. But it was just announced that college football 25 is coming out July 19th, which is amazing. So in honor of college football 25, we thought we'd have some fun and give you um, give you some tee-ups, and you're going to give us some player attribute ratings for some of your former teammates and opponents. And, my friend, you are carrying this segment because I have no idea what we're talking about. But we're going to start with you. <laughs> Out of 100, what rating are you giving your speed? Speed, I give myself like a, like a 95. I thought I'd go 96. Let's round up. How about your spectacular? Uh, we'll, we'll how about that spectacular <laughs> catch? Ooh, I definitely in the 90s somewhere, like 93. Impact blocking? Like 96. <laughs> blo uh, I'm guessing. The I'm blocking's guessing. the thing. I mean, let's just be honest. People need to talk more about the blocking. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. People talk a lot, like a... They mostly talk about my blocking more than my Good. speed nowadays. They should. What are you giving your former quarterback, J.J. McCarthy's deep ball accuracy? Uh, like 99. Ooh. What are you giving, <laughs> yeah. Blake, what are you giving Blake Corum for a strength? 99. Uh, you said you guys were the most – this is insane. You said you're the most underrated wide receiver core in college football. What is Cornelius Johnson's catch and traffic rating? Oh, probably 96. Mm. You that's mentioned. a specialty right there. What? That's a specialty. Catching yeah. the ball and traffic. 96, 96 is pretty good. Uh, Coach Harbaugh's swagger rating. Uh, yeah, I, put, I put the khakis and I put the khakis at like a 90. At a 90. He's not going to yeah. draft you now and you just ruined everybody in LA's day. Like He's got to he's gotta get the shoes going. I, Roman. I'll boost it. Roman. Marvin Harrison uh, Jr.'s overall rating. Uh, I mean, he's a good receiver, probably like a, like a 98, 97. Okay. Roman Wilson, coming to an NFL team near you. Hopefully, you know, wherever you go is where you're supposed to go. That's what I say. Uh, I loved hanging out with you. Thank you and good luck. And don't forget about me when you are famous, sir. Of course, famous, of sir. Course. I got I you. I can't even talk. You're going to have my job whenever you want it. Uh, love you, Roman. Good luck. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye. Bye.